five billion dollars next year. Um, we needed the trip to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, then, the, in the, the, because of the nature of this transaction, uh, where there's twelve and a half billion dollars of debt, and the Fed rate has been going crazy, um, there's on the order of a billion and a half ish of debt servicing that's required. So we're talking about like uh, net cash outflow. If you didn't make any changes, of on the order of like six six and a half billion next year, with uh, revenue probably tracking to three. So that's like a negative cash flow situation of three billion dollars a year. Not good. Uh, since Twitter has one billion in cash. So that's why I spent the last five weeks cutting costs like crazy. I think we also got to get the advertisers. What yeah. Yeah. Uh, we do need to get the advertisers. Um, but the, like I said, I, I've, I've spoken to a number of the advertisers. Their, 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 their requests are not uh, fuzzy or, or irrational or, or anything. They're like quite reasonable. They're like, just show us an ROI that makes sense. And I'm like, yes, I agree. If I were in their position, I would also want an ROI that makes sense, especially when when headed into uh, difficult economic times where these questions are asked a lot more than in prosperous times. In prosperous times, there is plenty of budget for advertising, um, and you can you can get away with uh, unclear ROI. But when times are tough, then then the hard questions of return on investment are asked. Um, and when you do not have a clear answer, then advertisers don't want to advertise because they're being sane. Um, sure. that's, that's the main issue. Um, so uh, this is important. So now with the, the changes that we're making here on uh, massively reducing the burn rate um, and uh, building subscriber revenue, I now think that Twitter will in fact be okay next year. Um, I think we will be about uh, hopefully sort of roughly cash flow break even. That's what I expect for next year. Um, but this this will be quite this will be difficult. But but I think that's that's where what will happen is roughly cash flow break even as opposed to minus three billion ish uh, on on with one billion of cash, which would be therefore dead. Um, so that's uh, the reason for my actions. They, they may seem sometimes uh, spurious or uh, odd or whatever. Uh, it's because this is not, we have an emergency fire drill in our hands. That's the reason. Not because uh, I am like naturally capricious or, or at least aspirationally I'm not naturally capricious. Um, so. Uh, but but if if you sort of if you say you're looking at it from my standpoint and you're saying okay wow um, this company is is like like basically you're in a plane that is headed towards the ground at high speed uh, with the engines on fire and the controls don't work. I use I, yeah. I use I yeah. use the same analogy at Kama. Um, can we afford good food? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it, um, it's it's really important to me. No, I think we we can afford good food. Um, the 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 like the the, the madness of the, for example, the uh, headquarters uh, food budget was that it was thirteen million dollars a year of fixed rate, no matter how many people showed up. So, uh, if the normal meal price would have been, if the building was fully occupied, twenty dollars. For actually a, quite a good lunch, the the, the food was good. Um, uh, then, but if you if you are, if you drop to five percent occupancy, you've now multiplied the effective meal cost by twenty, and that's where you get a four hundred dollar lunch, literally. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the the food was great. I loved the cheese seed pudding and the smoothies in the morning. But yeah, you got to tell everyone to come into the office. It's crazy to me that people think they can have a job where they don't show up to an office. Right, and and like it seems like a logical thing. If um, if you have a building where there's literally five percent occupancy, um, that you would seek to uh, renegotiate the the food budget and not, um, you know, have it be twenty times more than it should be. But wow. that was literally the case. Um, so, I, I 
you know, um, the food's a lot worse now than it was a lot worse. Yeah. Well, we can definitely improve that. Uh, right. so that's, uh, this is not, that's not like a, I think some imp impossible thing to overcome. Um, so well, but <laughs> no, I, I think that terrible I, food. this is not, uh, you know, this is not, not going to break the bank. The, the, the issue is more, we, we, you can't pay like $13 million a year uh, for a, a mostly empty building uh, for lunch and not even including dinner. So I could save, I could save $13 million by switching ads prediction from TF serving to Onyx runtime alone. Yeah, I'm not. I'm saying we can totally have a good lunch. Right. Um, we're not in like lunch purgatory for the rest of the time. Uh, <laughs> um, we, you know, uh, it, like we may have gone too far, is what I'm saying. I admit we may have gone too far <laughs> in in cost cutting. Love, uh, love with respect you. to the lunch. That that could be the case. Um, and, and 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 so we'll have to sort of we may have overcorrected in that regard, and we can fix it. Um, <laughs> this is not an insurmountable problem. Um, so uh, yeah. Well, all right. So so I'm, I'm like uh, refactors, food.